Another kind of potential energy I need to tell you about is elastic potential energy. And it is due to the compression or extension of really anything, really any material that has some elastic quality to it. But for now, we'll focus on a spring. So that is the most common one to think about when you're just getting started. So let's think about a spring in a situation kind of like this. It is um, clamped at one end like that, and it's got a mass on it like that. Now a spring always has sort of a natural length that it wants to be. So if we actually think of this as the x-axis that it's on and call this the origin, the origin we could say is the natural length it wants to be. So the back of the spring is at x equals negative l, and we'll call this just l naught, the natural length. If you don't apply any forces to it, is l naught. And you can see here I have a spring with a mass. So this little orange mass is sal, and sal is connected to a spring that I just made by coiling up some wire like that. So I'm going to lay it down similar to what we drew on the board. So we'll have it um, clamped at this end, and then I can push uh, back and forth, compress and extend the spring. So what you'll find is if I compress the spring, I had to do work to compress the spring. I had to push really hard to compress the spring and to push the mass this way. Let me do it again. Oh, so much work. I'm pushing over some distance. I'm doing work. And we know there's probably some energy involved because if I release Sal, after I do the work, you get quite a bit of kinetic energy. So let's see. What we've said is we had it originally at the origin, and now we have compressed the spring and uh, sal, the mass, is now here. And we were at the origin, and now we're at the position minus x. We compressed it some distance from 0 to minus x. And we know we have done some work on it. And if you do work on it, but you don't give it any kinetic energy, it must be that you gave it um, potential energy. So we gave it elastic potential energy. So we'll call it u. We'll go ahead and call it us, since we're always going to be dealing with a spring. And the formula is a little more complicated than gravitational potential energy because gravitational, the force is always constant. So just the force times the distance. Here, the force um, actually changes as you push because we know from Hooke's law for forces, F equals kx. So the farther you push, um, uh, the bigger the force. So that makes the expression a little more complicated, but it's just 1 half k times the spring constant times however much you stretched it uh, squared, 1 half kx squared is the spring potential energy. And you also get it when you extend it. If we had extended it this way by delta x, we would also have to do work. We'd have to push against the spring force to do that. And we would do the same amount of work. And if we released it, we would also get the kinetic energy back. So the same thing happens when you compress a spring or when you extend a spring. So that's just another one. So let's think a few things we've learned about uh, potential energy in the two that we have considered gravitational and elastic. Some potential energy bullets here. Let's think. One is it's an, always an interaction between two objects. That's what's different, one thing that's different between kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is a property of a single object. It has a velocity, it has a mass, it has kinetic energy. Potential always requires two. Gravitational requires the Earth and the object for most of our calculations. And um, elastic requires the mass and the spring. They have to push on each other. Um, it also, a characteristic, is it depends on position. It might do so in different ways. Gravitational, it uh, just uh, it varies with your height. Uh, as you move up and down in the gravitational field of the Earth and spring, it depends on your position squared just because of the nature of the spring force. But depending on position is another key that something 
uh, is a potential energy. And finally, only changes in the potential energy matter. It was especially clear in gravitational problems, gravitational potential energy problems, that you could always sort of arbitrary what you define as zero. We could do a whole problem about how fast is something when it hits the table and consider that zero potential energy. Then we could always go to the floor. Oh, maybe that needs to be zero. And really, in the end, in terms of calculating something real, it doesn't matter. You've got to define somewhere as zero. Same thing is true on the spring. Somewhere you just got to make zero. The fact that it's square doesn't matter. There's still this sort of arbitrariness to what is zero. Whereas for kinetic, Zero is when it's not moving. You know where there's a zero. So anyway, these three things have come up in our two kinds of potential energy. There are many, many other kinds of potential energy, but gravitational and spring are the two we're going to use a lot in physics one.